a lot of the time we go through the motions of Judaism instead of understanding the why. And it's just all about like the why. That's always why I wanted to go like to really, really understand that it's not just like a series of rituals that we do. My journey, thank God, through Aish and, you know, six years ago coming until now was a slow process which made me who I am today. That's amazing. I came as an NCS wire on TJJ. I was like 14. The first time we saw the coat cell was on top of the H building. And then I'm back. I was born in 1992 in Toronto. Growing up in terms of my Jewish identity, there wasn't much there. We celebrated the high holidays. His family would get together. But as I got older, I started to realize that the only thing that Judaism meant to me was it affected my eating habits. So as I got older, I started pushing it away and I, I really wasn't into it. And then as I was finishing university, I was very into music, rock and roll, grew my hair long. So what do you do when you're really into rock and roll? You go to LA, Sunset Strip. And then after Sunset Strip, I decided, you know what, let me go to San Diego. I was in public school, and so before seminary, I was gonna go to USC for screen acting. It was a hard choice to make. I got into USC, and um, I wanted to defer for the years. And as I was writing, I was like, then I'm gonna go back to LA to be an, an actress. I was like, what am I saying? While I was staying at a hostel in San Diego by the beach, I got a text message from my mom saying, you gotta come home now, today's the day. Hop in a plane back to Toronto, my father picks me up from the airport and drives me to Sunnybrook Hospital, where I run up the stairs to the room where my brother was in, and he passed away 30 seconds after I walked into the room. It was actually the second last day of Pesach that my brother passed away. I didn't know what that meant, you know, they said, you can't move a body because it's yuntif. I'm like, well, what's yuntif? And they said that, you know, you have to look after the body, you have to, you know, there has to be something called a shomer. So I'm like, okay, he was the closest person in the world to me. I'll be his shomer, whatever that means. So I slept in the basement of the hospital for two days, watching, you know, bodies being rolled in and out of the morgue. And I started thinking about what is life about? Is there a God? We did the shiva, and then I would go to shul every day and say, mourners kaddish. I felt connected to something. Anyways, after the 30 days, forgot it all really, and got back into partying in the same old lifestyle that I was living before. I always wanted to go to Asia. So I'm like, yeah, I want a free trip to Thailand, to Asia, so let me come on this 10-day birthright trip, hang out here for a bit, and then go to Asia. So I come here on birthright, and I loved it. So then I went to Thailand, Cambodia, enjoyed my time over there for a bit. And then when I came back to Toronto, I felt invigorated with my Judaism, but I didn't know exactly what that meant. So I was like, yeah, I'm Israeli, my father's Israeli, I'm Israeli, and I'm Jewish. So I came here, and the first day I came here was actually the, the Discovery Program. I was mind blown. I was like, whoa, there's actual truth behind this. Everyone wants to be an actress and be a movie star, but when it's really in between choosing your life, like it's such an easy choice to make. It was so not a question that like, this is where I wanted to be. I loved everything about my life. It seemed okay, it wasn't meaningful, and some parts of it felt empty, but I enjoyed my life. I wasn't looking to switch up my life. But after I took Discover and I saw that maybe there's truth behind this, I feel like I have to pursue it. So I took Discovery another four times to make sure that it, it was true. Before I change my life, I gotta make sure it's true. So every day was sort of a new day that, okay, fine, I'll hang out at Aisha a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. Because of all the tools I've gained in Aish, now I'm going back this summer as an NCSY advisor on TJJ, that same summer program that I went on five years ago as a teen. Thank God, five and a half years later, I'm now married to an Israeli and living in Yerushalayim, and it's the most beautiful thing. We're who we were when we walked in, but like so much better and so much more ourselves because Aish has given us the place to share it and to celebrate it. They don't just portray one form of Judaism. They show you like the whole spectrum. We're gonna be living so much more refined and so much more on a different level and like really be living with Hashem. I always was so scared of things that looked this good and I was always intimidated by it, but Asia is the kind of place that like anyone and everyone could walk into and love and find a place in. It's just been so good. 
I'm now learning and training to teach that discovery seminar that I was first impacted by. All of this thanks to the magic of Aish and the fiery passion and responsibility that Aish instills in us to light up our nation so that we can light up the world.